three questions to the black Hebrew Israelites. All right, what are they? First, have you ever encircled an all-white Christian church? Oh, very interesting question. Number two. And this question is, uh, from Mr. Muhammad is directed to the Hebrew Israelites. He ain't directing to me. Right, that's right. Did you ever encircle an all-white Christian all church? An all-white Christian church. That's a very good question. I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. Let me tell, right, let me tell you. <laughs> we don't care. Jerry. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Number two. All right. You know the difference of belief between you and the Muslims. So why have you never surrounded a mosque? Very good question. Number three. Why haven't you surrounded a mosque? The Lord will take you and your king away to a foreign land, where neither you nor your ancestors ever lived before. There you will serve gods made of wood and stone. We got Geno Jennings here, and he had three questions and he said that it was from some Muslim named Muhammad. Okay, I'll give you that. It came from a Muslim individual by the name of Muhammad, even though that's a very common name, right? That's like saying it came from a Mexican guy named Jose. Um, I got a question for you when it comes down to the Muslim. Why in the Quran does it say, refer to the Bible? Why does the Quran also say that the Israelites are the chosen people? And why did your man Muhammad sit down with the Israelites? And that's the only way that you found out that Yahweh, Bahashim Habashiach Yahweh was black. That's the only way you guys found out that God, whose real name is Yahweh, is black. And that's the only reason why you found out that the Israelites were the chosen. You had to sit down with our guys in New York back in the 1990s. For you to actually get educated to what the Bible is. That's how come y'all don't read the Quran. And I'm talking about the black Muslims. They don't read the Quran. Y'all read the Bible. You ever listen to Fer Minister Farrakhan's lessons? It's all off the Bible. Because y'all learn from the Israelites. All right. Number three. Seeing that many of our black young men are being shot down by white police officers. Why have you never surrounded a police station? Very good question. <laughs> Stupid. All these disasters will come on you, and they will be with you until you are destroyed, because you did not obey the Lord your God and keep all the law. So then, you will serve the enemies that the Lord is going to send against you. You will be hungry, thirsty, and naked in need of everything. The Lord will oppress you harshly until you are destroyed. The Lord will bring against you a nation from the ends of the earth, a nation whose language you do not know. They will swoop down on you like an eagle. They will be ruthless and show no mercy to anyone, young or old. So that's in question, or that right there is the answer to why don't they, why didn't they surround a police station? What for? We're currently living in the curses. So there's no way in the world. Why would we go surround the police? There's nobody in the police station that we need to talk to. The people that we need to talk to are the individuals that are sitting inside of your congregation. And I got a question for you, Mr. Geno Jennings. These questions should have been directed to IUIC because those are the men who actually wanted to rebuke you on your false teachings of the Bible. For example, according to you, you hate the blackness of the black men. Y'all felt they disgusting black skin. That's what you say. You can't stand it. You absolutely hate black people. 
worse than Uncle Ruckus. Number two, you're bald headed. Yahweh told us and commanded for us not to round the corners of our head. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. But yet you profess to be a man of God. You don't keep the law, statutes, and commandments to the Most High God. I have a question for you. Why were you scared of the Israelites? Why didn't you go out to go meet? Literally, Bishop Nathaniel was there. How come you didn't go out there? Why did you hold over church for an extended period of time because you were scared to go meet them? Isn't it you that said that you're willing to take all the smoke? You're willing to take any debate? But yet you didn't want to debate the men of Israel. Why? Because we're the only ones that have the true understanding, the true dark sayings, the true breakdowns, the true parables of the Most High God because he only revealed it to us. You're a ne'er-do-well. You have no idea what's going on. But I bet you thought it was funny that a Muslim was writing to you. Uh, let's see what some of your comments say. Mm. From Xing 7 they say, I have a question. Why won't Gino Jennings have that debate with the Israelites? That's a good question. You, why you have so many questions? Why don't you sit down with the Israelites? Val Restanio 8478 says, their goal is to spread the message, not provoking drama or turmoil. The Vettol 5944 says, why would they? They're here to wake up our own people. Here's a good question. Why is your big old giant church right there on that corner, but yet you still have prostitutes, game bankers, drug dealers, and poor people? And how come pastors are richer than their parishioners? Let's see what God says about you pastors. Let me get the book of Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 21. The book of Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 21. For the pastors are become brutish and have not sought the Lord. Therefore, they shall not prosper and all their flocks shall be scattered. So you see what the Lord is saying? The Lord is literally saying that he gave you leaders, but those leaders are stupid. They don't ask questions to the Lord about guidance. And this is why they have failed and why our people have been scattered. This is what the Most High God is saying about you pastors. You did, you're not there to build. You're there to destroy. And we can get that in the book of Jeremiah chapter 12 verse 10. The book of Jeremiah chapter 12 and verse 10. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion on their foot. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. Now understand this for Geno Jennings and any of the rest of you pastors that are out here, when he says that you pastors have destroyed his vineyard, he's not talking about a literal vineyard. He's talking about the Israelites. And we can get that, that in the book of Isaiah chapter 5 verse 7. Read. The book of Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 7. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the man of Judah his pleasant plant. Hey, Gino and the rest of you pastors, we love you. You're our brothers. But do you, did you see what I just did? You see, I, I read scripture. And then what I did is I gave you a precept to back that scripture up. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Right? I didn't speak of my own breath or my own words. That's what you Christians do. You'll sit in front of your congregation, you'll profess to be a man of God, but you don't live the life. You believe Christian means follower of Christ. Okay, cool. Okay, you're a follower of Christ, then start doing it. You must obey God's law, statutes, commands. If you love the Lord, wait, here's another one. What's the love of the Lord? And we can get that in the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 3. The book of 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. But see, you Christians will teach that the commandments are grievous and that nobody can keep the commandments. And you Israelites, I say, I about felt that black skin. That's how you see us. That, that doesn't show love now, does it, brother? That shows a whole lot of hate. So I have a question for you. Do you love God? For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, 
line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. He shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.